Tout le long, mais le bon, mais le vrai. Venez tous jeunes fils et garçons, je vais vous raconter l'histoire de notre ami. Hello, my name is Jesse Marno, and I am the host of the French Canadian Legacy Podcast. Actually hanging out right now in my apartment. Got a pretty good size helping of puts in, waiting for me. Um, actually, not just any puts in. This is puts in from uh, Chez Vachon here in Manchester. The place that I discovered puts in. They're the first place I ever heard of that had uh, puts in anywhere around here. And uh, this is actually kind of a special puts in for me because the very last time I went to Chez Vachon with my meme, meme Provence, uh, she ordered the puts in with kielbasa. So that's, that's what I got today. Actually, that's a, you know, show you size of it. It's pretty huge. And that's the appetizer size if you were to go to Chez Vachon. But the reason I'm making this video today is because I am not supposed to be here. The entire plan for the day I am recording this video was there was going to be a puts in contest between myself and my sister Monique against Tim Beaulieu and his brother Dan. Now, Tim, somebody who's going to be familiar uh, to a lot of the listeners of my podcast, he is the founder of the <laughs> hugely successful uh, New Hampshire puts in fest. And we're going to have a contest 2v2 to determine who kind of reigns supreme. Which family reigns supreme over puts in in this area of New England? Uh, we had tables, we had fryers, we had electric, we had judges, we have a trophy. Unfortunately, that was all put on hold because of COVID, which is kind of messing up a whole lot of things, obviously, right now. So instead, we're going to make a video. And we're going to talk a little bit about puts in, uh, kind of what, a, the, what the puts in scene, I guess, looks like uh, in my area here. Uh, so we'll be talking to Matt Preventure. Uh, he is the head chef of the <laughs> really great restaurant here in Manchester, the Foundry. Actually, the reigning uh, Puts In Fest champion. So I'm really excited to talk to him. Uh, we'll be talking to Renee McMaster, who opened up a food truck here in New Hampshire that's called the Hot Mess Puts In. It is absolutely awesome. Uh, she's actually from Quebec, which is very cool. So we'll be chatting with her. Uh, also, Melanie Cunningham. Who, you guys would like Melanie's story. She is like a giant puts in super fan. So that's going to be way exciting. So looking forward to all those. Uh, in addition, we're going to have some other bonus stuff. Like uh, you'll be able to see some of the promos that either me and my sis or Dan and Tim made to try to like kind of hype up our contest. There will probably be some videos of my sis and I practicing because we did. We had some and practice time to hopefully make the puts in, best puts in possible. So we'll put that all together, hopefully make an entertaining video for you. The puts in contest will happen, just not just not in the immediate future. So uh, we'll talk to Dan, Tim, my sister Monique, Matt, Renee, Melody, and so hopefully it'll be a fun time. So hope you guys like it. And we're going to kick off this video that I was mentioning in that intro. So I did not mention, which I should have, is why we are doing all of this craziness in the first place. That's because of a grand, brand new, awesome organization that started up, the Association for the Advancement of the French Language and Francophone Culture in the United States. So we're going to be trying to put together videos and, uh, that hopefully they can put out for us and just have a good time. So joining me now, as I said, first, the man, the myth, the legend, the founder of the New Hampshire Puts In Fest, although I think in my intro I may have called you the host, which is my bad. Sorry about that if I did. Now, the founder of the New Hampshire Puts In Fest, Tim Beaulieu. Tim, welcome to the hey. car. Hey, how's it going? Now, I understand. You guys all have your own Puts In, right? Yes. Yeah. So what are you eating now, Tim? Yeah, so we made our own, just a homemade Puts In, just uh, regular, you know, cheese curds. It's melted a little bit, but um, just melt regular cheese curd, great, uh, you know, Beef, chicken, gravy, some, I won't say, little onion type dip type stuff. Um, yeah, we went traditional. We we're going to do a bacon one, but uh, today's soccer Saturday. It's a very busy day, so we went traditional. <laughs> I got you. All right, also joined us, his brother, Dan. Who are you? Dan, welcome to the party. Now you're hey. already semi-infamous for your videos that you have been able to put out for. I've cut a lot of promos and uh, I will continue because this is on the line at some point. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is the ultimate poutine challenge. Yes, that's uh, it. 
a lot of people have been talking about this for, for a long time. So we will get it straightened out and uh, we'll get it, we'll get it taken care of. Awesome. And we'll go down. <laughs> hey, great. And finally, my sis. Hello, hello. Welcome. Yeah. So what, what kind of puts in you got going on right now? Listen, well, this is, a, this is a quick recap. I just quickly threw something together. I'm sure it's still better than the Bully Year Brothers, <laughs> but it's not as good as I normally do when I do it from scratch with cutting potatoes and all of that. But, you know, right now we'll, we'll take our main potatoes and some, some uh, a little brown chicken gravy mix here. And it's, it's okay. It's one bite. Everyone knows the rules about a 4.5. <laughs> <laughs> and I will say she does live very close to Duck Fat, a place that me and Jesse were very impressed by. So yeah, I don't think they deliver a half hour out though. I think it's yeah. I could be I'm, wrong. I'm yeah. about a half hour out. Yeah. Well, first of all, where, Monique, where are you? And then maybe fill us in. Where is Duck Fat? If we're getting plugged sure. in. Yeah, sure. So yeah. I, I I live in Wells, Maine, and obviously uh, Maine's a pretty pretty prominent uh, French Canadian Franco American area. But Duck Fat is a restaurant up in Portland, so about about thirty minutes from me. That is, a, it's got it's known for some really good food, including their poutine. Awesome, Dan. Where are you at yeah. right now? Uh, we're in Merrimack, uh, where we are kind of you know we made our own, but we are surrounded by quite a few uh, places that have it. Um, we uh, kind of spoiled here in, uh, in in New Hampshire. Merrimack is the home of New Hampshire Pretend Fast at Anheuser Busch. Yeah, true. Uh, appreciate true. the segue, uh, Tim. We mentioned. Yeah, which is kind of where the idea for all of the silliness came from. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people not from the New England area who do not know what New Hampshire Pussin Fest is or what this is all about. So can you please introduce them? Well, where you got that idea from? What is it? Tell us about it. Uh, yeah, sure. So New Hampshire Pussin Fest is um, it's a sampling event. Um, it is uh, currently, I'm watching Dan recording the screen here. Um, Just taking pictures. It's a few thousand folks that come out. They get to try 10 to 12 different patents um, from around the region. Um, we've had folks come from Maine, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, Vermont. Um, we've talked to um, restaurants in other, other New England states and outside New England and in Quebec. Um, this would have been our fifth year. This year we did a road show um, where uh, participants got to go around and, and try 14 different patents in Maine and New Hampshire. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. It's based upon like, you know, some of the sampling events we've seen in Canada, uh, mo well, mostly in Quebec, actually, I won't say Canada, but you know, Western Quebec. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, Quebec and Western Canada. Um, and, uh, you know, poutine is still kind of growing in the United States. Um, so they do some ground poutine fests, uh, poutine fests in like Montreal and Ottawa. We're not there yet. Um, so we do a sampling style event, like we saw by, um, some of the folks in Chicago had a, had a Poutine Fest um, a while back, and uh, we kind of took their model um, and brought it to New England, and it was it's just a much easier sell here because we have that you know Franco-American connection. Um, so yeah, hoping to grow that, and we'll see if we extend outside New Hampshire's borders at some point. I love it. Really awesome event. Pay one price. You show up. You get the taste from absolutely everybody that's there, which is way fun. And I know Monique, you attended for the first time. This last time, what, what was your participation to this party? Sure. Yeah. So I think the thing is beyond just obviously eating the poutine, it's a celebration of Franco-American heritage and the fact that we are still alive, we're still around and, you know, we're recognizing our roots and celebrating our roots. So one of the things I got to do, which was a privilege, I own a dance studio here in Sanford, Maine. And um, uh, my girls came down, my performance team came down to entertain at the event, and they did some clogging, which has some ties to Frank, uh, French, well, I guess to Canadian step dancing. There's some, some influence there, along with other influences. So the girls were able to show that off at the event to celebrate, you know, Franco-American heritage. And it's cool, because you got a whole group of kids down, which is always way fun. And yep. 100% right. I was just talking to people in line, uh, interviewing some people for the podcast as we we're waiting to get in. It took me maybe five minutes before I had interviewed somebody from every New England state who had come in just for the Puts In Fest. It was pretty, really, it was really, really awesome. And Dan, what do you bring to the table when it comes time to Puts In Fest? Because this is always a show. You are showing yourself at Puts In Fest. I, I did have to miss a year. Uh, I had a buddy get married, but I usually carry around the belt. 
uh, help everybody out, or, or at least promote it to let people take pictures with it. Because you got a lot of people that you know, they see the belt. Um, it, it was inspired by Jesse. Jesse was the original uh, originator of, of of making that. So um, that's usually what my job has been. But I, obviously, again, I wasn't there last year. So I apologize. <laughs> no, it's, it's very awesome because it, one of the, the winner of this event gets to take home. A uh, like a WWE style, legitimately huge um, championship belt. So it's very cool. Yeah, Man gets to walk around, talking to people, hand them the belt, and then them take pictures. It's actually it's a really good time. It it, it it's a great time, and uh, yeah. COVID blows over, and we can just we can do that again. You know. Yeah, it was a great event. It was really and it the perfect location this time in Merrimack and, and Hazard Bush. It was great. And big shout out to the group of girls that did the whole uh, road show. They've been there every year, and uh, we started on Instagram. So big shout out to them. So big shock, the founder of Fortune Fest watches the social media accounts pretty closely. For <laughs> um, so we saw this group of women just killing it. I mean, they're going everywhere. They're getting pictures with the owners. They're trying them all, and we just loved it. Um, you know. It, it's just exactly the spirit we're trying to have. Like, and this is a Franco-American thing for us and French-Canadian, but the point for me is to, to weave us back into the American culture overall, because we're still here. Um, and we might as well, you know, um, celebrate who we are, but that's also part of America. So that's not such a bad thing. And it's really cool to see, you know, folks who really aren't connected to anything Franco-American, who just love the, this part of our culture, the food, and are, are celebrating it more than I think anyone I've seen this summer, which is awesome. Yeah, it is very awesome. And uh, one of them, by the way, will be joining me for an interview about an hour after I get off of this. So, oh, hell yeah. Nice. Right. It'll be really, right. really fun to be able to connect with her. Nice. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> All right. So, we cannot end this chat. Well, first of all, Tim, can you introduce us to our, to our new guest? This is this is Addie. So can you say hello? Hello. Hi, Dr. Adeline. Very cool. Well, we can't end this discussion without everybody being able to talk a little bit, give their thoughts about whenever this contest happens, what their what their thoughts are going into our contest. Nick, what do you think? I just, I mean, I think it comes down to preparation and training. Um, I see a lot of videos being made from the. Uh, the brothers but i don't see a lot of videos where they're prepping they're cooking oh, yeah. they're just, it's just you know i don't even need to say it i just you know there's lots of there's just lots of talk but i don't you know we'll see I mean, this Tony, scary if you fruit. want to talk about talking there's no one that talks more than you so, i don't know about that i don't know I mean, about that you, you know if you really want to get into it <laughs> i'm just saying i walk these streets and i get ready to go <laughs> What do you think? No, so let's go. You stepped up. What do you think contest then? Tim? Oh, sorry. Uh, Addie has pumpkin cupcake on her fort. I was getting off. Um, <laughs> we're like, so I don't just run the largest <laughs> Putin event in the United Daddy? States currently. I also am raising a very strong young lady here, obviously. Brady? And my son Brady's inside too. He's actually like, I'm going to stay off camera and let you guys film. <laughs> um, a little older, he gets it. So, you know. <laughs> We've been around this. Like we know we got our we got our stuff down. Like we try every puts in everywhere. We, you know, I'm obviously working hard, you know, with the kids here. So we just kinda have that background. Um, so a lot of confidence going in. I let Dan do the hype and I just let my action speak. It is what it is. Awesome. And Dan, one last time. Go ahead. Go ahead. I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead, bud. No, no, there's just there's been a lot of trash talk. Uh, mostly from Monique, I will say. <laughs> I'm looking right in the camera and I'm looking right at you. You need to set a date and you need to bring it because guess what, Monique? I'm not a hard man to find. He's not a hard man to find. You know where we are. You know where we live. Don't just sing it, bring it because that's all you can do, baby. I don't think there's a better way to end than that. That's pretty terrific. Oh, <laughs> oh boy. For uh, joining me on this chat, I appreciate it. Okay, so we could not have a show about Pusin without talking to the reigning Pusin Fest champion, 
So we are very excited to be joined right now by Matt Preventure, who is the executive chef at the Foundry. And anybody who's been to Manchester at all realizes that the Foundry is a ridiculously good restaurant here in Manchester. So Matt, welcome. Little show one puts in. <laughs> I can't wait. So, <laughs> all right. So let, let's get your story first. Where are you from? Uh, I actually grew up in Manchester. Gotcha. About uh, about about six blocks from the restaurant. That's awesome. All right. So how did you end up in the culinary yeah. field then? Um, I joke. It, it, it always breaks my mom's heart when I say this. I started cooking because I couldn't stand my mom's pork chops anymore. <laughs> so she, uh, she, she grew up old school where you, you cut the, you know, the, the pork chops that were this thick and cook them for, you know, three hours and, 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 and shake and bake. <laughs> so, and then, you know, I had, I had really good pork chops and I was like, wow, like this is, this is amazing. And it just kind of, just kind of started from there. And, you know, I started off, I wanted to be a baker. Okay. And, uh, I, one day I was in the kitchen and they were like, you know, we don't need you in the bake shop today. Can you help on salads? And I jumped on the salads. I was like, this is amazing. This is what I want to do. And that was it. That was 26 years ago. Awesome. So how did so, you make your way to the foundry then? Um, I was cooking out in Portsmouth and okay. um, the owner of the foundry was, you know, they were starting to build and starting to try to figure this all out. And um, they were looking for a chef. And um, the owner's head of HR, I cooked for her for years at different restaurants. And all of a sudden, I get this, this message on, on, on LinkedIn saying, hey, you know, can you give me a call? I want to talk. And I'm like, that's kind of odd, but whatever. And so I call her, and she goes, oh, she goes, you know, we're, Dean wants to open a restaurant. And I go, okay. She goes, you know, do you know anybody? Do you know any chefs in the area that might be interested? And I said, you know what, let me, let me poke around. Give me a few days. And I was sitting there, and I was like, you know, I had been driving from Manchester to Portsmouth for four years. And sure. I had, you know, out there, it's very seasonal. So during the summer, it's wild. During the winter, it's dead. You know, so I talk to my wife and I said, you know, what do you think? I'm like, so I called her, I go, I'm interested. And she goes, that's awesome. She's like, that's what we were hoping for. So we uh, interviewed with him, with the boss, and that was that. So that is very cool. You know, that's been five, five, years, five and a half years. Now, did so, you have any say in the, what the menu would be? Like the, the planning of the menu? Oh yeah, from day one. I was here when construction started. So nice. we, you know, for everything, I had design the kitchen, you know, to input on the napkins to <laughs> just different ideas. Okay, so this is a, obviously we're doing a special on puts in. Did you know right from the beginning, you know, I'm open, I'm going to be an executive chef. Puts in is going to be on my menu. Was that kind of a, a thing that you had in mind? Oh yeah, we've been, I've been doing it for 10 years now. And it always just kept evolving from, you know, from okay French fries to, you know, better fries to good cheese curd to better cheese curd. And, you know, right now we use Jersey Shore fries, which is a type of French fry. They're uh, coated with like a seasoning on them. So they actually stay pretty crispy. Um, I use cheese curd from Myers Dairy. He's a dairy farmer in Fort Covington, New York. Cool. And then we make our own gravy. So, and I joke, we make a, we make a big gravy. Like there's veal stock in it. There's duck stock oh, wow. in it. It's got it's got some 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 girth to it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Now, now, did you grow up with puts in? Were you familiar with puts in? I mean, the French I, name. You're from I Manchester. Knew, I knew what it was. I remember having it at at Chez Vachon when I was a kid. Sure. But you know, it was just that that growing, trying to figure it out, like you know. And when I got here, it was like you know, my my original sous chef was really excited about that. So it was like one of those things, like, like okay, let's figure this out. Let's make it better and better and better and you know and then we did every poutine fest this year like that they've done so, <laughs> you know so it was always you know like, like how do we just make it better and i think i i don't think it's the perfect but i think we just keep getting closer and closer so how did you even hear about poutine fest to begin with honestly i think tim reached out to me about it <laughs> that's so, i think he reached out he knows what we want to do and i said no put me in i'm in for i was like i'm in for the first year we'll see what happens and it just kept going and going. So that is awesome. And so you've yeah. been around right from the very beginning. Oh yeah. And this year I mentioned you are, well, I guess we couldn't do it this year, but you, the last yeah. time we had a real puts in fest, you are the defending puts in champion. Yeah. Of course that means you get the puts in championship belt. Where, where does the puts in championship belt currently reside? I'm very, it actually hangs in our lobby right now. 
<laughs> it's like, so if you walk into the restaurant, you're going to see the Putsin champion. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's mounted up on a wall. Yeah. Everybody thought it was really funny. I'm like, no, I want this on the wall. Like this is bragging rights. And, and you'd be amazed how many customers come in and they sit there looking at it, take a picture with it. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's great. That is very, very fun. All right. Yeah. So this has been very cool. I definitely appreciate the Tom talking Putsin with somebody who knows a heck of a lot about Putsin. And I hope you don't mind. Uh, my mom's a preventure, so I may tell people you're my cousin. That's cool. <laughs> That's okay, but you you have to you have to get one of these. Oh, I got I got one on my left arm. Nice. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, cool. Thank you for joining us, Matt. Yes. I will talk to you later. Hello, my name is Jesse Marno, and I am the host of the French Canadian Legacy Podcast. And joining me right now is Melanie Cunningham. This is going to be a way fun conversation. Big, huge Puts In fan. So we cannot have a Puts In show without inviting Melanie to the party. So thank you for joining us, Melanie. Oh, glad to be here anytime. Now, where are you from? Um, I'm originally from Rollinsford, New Hampshire. Gotcha. Down Do you know where that is? I don't. Oh, <laughs> okay. It's a small little town of like 3,000 people between Dover um, Summersworth and South Fork, Maine. So it's a small oh, little town. Yeah. Coast, coast town. Coast. Yeah. Near yep. the coast, anyway. All right. Very awesome. Now, where am I talking to you from now, though? Um, right now I'm in Los Angeles, California. Los Angeles, California. How long, how long yeah. are you there? Uh, well, I work in, uh, I'm a television producer. Very so cool. Um, I seem to be getting like a lot of work in LA. So <laughs> technically I'm a New Hampshire resident, but I work so much in LA that I have an apartment here. So awesome. So I go back and, that, and forth. But yeah. <laughs> Very cool though. We've run into you at the Putsin Fest. Now, first of all, when did you first hear of Putsin? How did this even become something you were aware of in Rollinsford? Oh, well, the, 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 dish itself it's like if you grow up in new hampshire like you've heard that like <laughs> how can you not i've been to quebec and montreal so many times like awesome. at least once or twice a year in really? elementary school just yeah because there, cool. um, there was some amusement park up there that we would go to a lot like our band would play all right the school band would like the play school there. band so, yeah yeah. So your school so. band would make annual trips up to Quebec? Yep. This is the greatest school band of all time. <laughs> no, that's very cool. I'm super jealous of that. I mean, I didn't get to go to Quebec. Well, I, I could have, I guess. But I didn't go to Quebec until I was 18. And I went there because, you know, you drink with you. Yeah. But yeah, <laughs> no, good for you. That's way awesome. Now, how did you find out then about the Putsin Fest? Oh, uh, I guess it was like two weeks after the first one. My best friend, uh, Roz, was like, have you heard of this? And I was like, <laughs> no. He's like, we missed this one, but next year. So I was like, uh, okay, okay, next year. And I didn't really think much about it. Um, she likes factory tours and stuff like that. So she's always finding these, like, different festivals or things to do. We do a lot of beer fests with her. And so sure. I was like, okay, okay. And then I actually in LA at the time when tickets went on sale and she's like, did you get tickets? And I'm like, tickets for what? And she's like, the Pachin Fest. I'm like, okay, okay, I'll, I'll get tickets. And so tickets went on sale 10 o'clock on Eastern Coast. Uh, so that means it was 7 a.m. here. I got up at 7 a.m. <laughs> and I awesome. got tickets. <laughs> Very and cool. we've been going ever since, so yeah. Now, that is great. Now, obviously this year we could not have the normal Puts In Fest that we normally do. We had what's called the Puts In Road Show, which is, I guess, kind of the best we could do. First of all, how did you find out about this? What was your thoughts when you heard about the road show? And what was your participation in this road show? Um, well, at this time, this would have been the fifth year of the, the festival. So we have been going for four years, all well, three previous years, and this would have been our fourth year. So we were already, we had the 
the date for when tickets go on sale, like uh, an alarm can go off on our calendars, on our phones. So we were ready. We were ready for tickets to go on sale. And so we've been tracking. Uh, Roz's awesome. little sister actually tracks uh, the Poutine Fest on Facebook. So she has like Google alerts that anytime there's a mention of it <laughs> to go awesome. off. So we were tracking. Like, okay. Yeah, it was, it was like, is it going to happen? Is it not? Because the ticket sales got pushed. And it was sure. like, okay. They got pushed to the state, and, and then finally the big announcement was, oh, they were going to do this road show, and we're going to go to the places. So it's like, okay, okay, I can make this happen. Because usually if I'm in L.A., I would, like, block out a week to go to the fest. I, I'd fly back, sometimes just fly back for the weekend to go there. So this time it was like, we made a plan. <laughs> <laughs> we made a plan got together and we sat down, we made Excel charts of like all the locations. That's and tremendous. Locations. We found out their hours of operations. Um, <laughs> we had distances because <laughs> we're like, okay, if we're going to go all the way to Manchester, can we do three places in one day? That's a lot of food. But we're like, we can do it. We can do it. Yeah, we, we made a plan. We had everything charted out. Yeah. And you got we all the were... team. Yes. All right. Do you we have a favorite? It. It's a no, oh, that's amazing. Well, okay. <laughs> yeah. well, I have a personal favorite. Okay. Um, the, the Burlington at Gravy was my personal favorite because it just tasted like New England. Okay. Like, how's that? Sometimes, like, it... It's amazing because they have like the maple syrup, <laughs> the apples, like the, the uh, cinnamon, the spiced apples. Mm -hmm. So it's like all my favorite things about New England in the fall was in that one dish. And that is amazing. It, yeah. <laughs> and at that point, I had been stuck in LA because of COVID. So I was like missing home. And that when I finally got back and got to have it, it was like, it made me cry. I, I feel like I'm going to start crying now. <laughs> just thinking about it. Like, it was, that just touched my heart. That deeply. is amazing. But my overall favorite, my overall favorite for, um, like, a traditional poutine sure. would be uh, the New England Tap House. Yeah, actually, it hooks it. That, that was a good, yeah, yeah, that was a good, like, traditional poutine with uh, the truffle oil like yeah. you can sort of taste the, like it wasn't what it was i'm like it's something a little earthy but i like it i like <laughs> it and then the owner came by and she's like oh truffle oil i'm like yeah so yeah, yeah. their owners are awesome so we, we've actually we've had them on the show from quebec so way way awesome people i'm glad so is the plan now every year no matter what is going on in Los Angeles at the time, you're going to try to make it on a plane to come back to make sure to never miss Pacific Fest. Yes. That's, it's, I love it's it. Already, we, we have the tracker out there getting ready for, okay, this is when tickets go on sale. This is, so, yeah. That's, that's, that's awesome. Our, that's, that's our <laughs> I love it. Well, thank you very much for talking to me, Millie. This was great. Oh, thank you for having me. All right, welcome to another guest of our Putsin special. Now, we could not do a special about Putsin without speaking to the owner of the hot mess Putsin truck renamed Master. Thank you for coming and joining us on our Putsin special episode. Oh, merci bien. <laughs> yeah, so Thank where are you, you from? You start, Thank we'll start you there. For having me again. <laughs> you go. It's a pleasure, yeah. <laughs> yeah, obviously, you don't have a New England accent. So, where are you from? Um, I'm from Saint Cyprien. Saint Cyprien is a chemin. Um, it's a really, really small town, uh, very right in the south of Quebec. <laughs> All right, cool. So, how how did you end up then in New England, running a food truck? Oh my goodness, it's a long story. Um, I I left a long time ago. I left when I was probably like 26. So um, I was hired from a construction company from Quebec. Um, I was a construction worker at that time. So uh, I moved to Florida. So I used to read the blueprint for a construction company uh, that was a framing metal. 
So I did that for a long time. And then uh, I moved from Florida to New England for another contract. And um, I did that for several years again. And I think my last job was um, the Exeter High School, Epping. That mm -hmm. was the last job um, I did. Uh, I actually did the layout for the whole school, all nice. the soffit, the walls, everything. Um, I was two years there and I was supposed to move to uh, British Columbia after that for my next contract. And um, at that time, I used to get out the country every 10 months just to renew my visa. Sure, sure. So I used to have a working visa at that time. So, but on the job, I met someone and uh, <laughs> and yeah, fall in love and uh, that's how I stay in New England. And the reason why I don't do that anymore is because something happened to my little girl. She had a brain tumor. Oh, wow, yeah. Yeah, she had a brain tumor when she was four months. And uh, with the kind of job I have before, you're all over the place, you're never sure. home. Sure. So I had to look for something else. So at that time, I tried, you know, I, I was a substitute teacher for a couple of years and I worked for Home Depot and... And then, you know, I, that was just a job for me. So I decided sure. to uh, go to culinary school and my passion always been cooking. So, and uh, that's how I, I had the idea to start the food truck <laughs> just for passion. You that's know? awesome. I mean, yeah, never, never passion. worked in a food truck ever and decided I'm, I'm going to buy my own. Yeah, the reason is uh, we were looking for one, but um, we were not really lucky. Um, sometimes the you know the equipment was not really good, or there was a mechanic, or always something. So my husband he said, "Well, my husband is a pipe fitter," so he said, "Yeah, maybe we should build one." So I did the design for it, and uh, it took us maybe nine months to build it, and uh, wow. but. Food truck for me, the thing and all that, first is the passion. Sure. Um, of course, you know, it, it, there's always a money there, but uh, because you need to, to pay you, you know, what to, sure. we put all our money pretty much on that truck, for sure. Right. Yeah. But I really think if you don't have the passion to run it, um, it could be pretty tough. It's a long hours, you know, the prep and all that. Um, you know, I usually get up at 6.30, I go to bed at 10, 11, um, it's like that. But wow. when you love what you do, sure, there is no problem, you know? Did you always know it would be a Putsin truck? No, not really. Um, I know I want to cook, for sure. Yeah. But I was looking for something uh, different, you know? Um, like I said, okay, there is Putsin in the in the area and uh, we see more and more putin right now sure. we, have, we have quite a bit of the choice but when i uh, a few years ago uh, the putin was not really um was not really popular like today right um so because you know the the festival uh, the putin feast and all that uh, they kind of put the putin on the map right sure. So, um, but at that time I was like, ah, I gotta do something. And, and uh, it's funny because when you go to Quebec, okay, you wanna put in, that's the first thing in your mind because you grow up with that. <laughs> of course, yeah. Uh, you know, when you leave your country, you go someplace else, you come back, you just wanna eat what you grow up with. That's uh, awesome. I don't say we, we eat the poutine every day. <laughs> At school, at high school, we used to eat the poutine every Friday at high school. Nice. And uh, that was not cheese curds because it was way too expensive. So that was the shred cheese. Oh, that's not as fun. Um, I like both. So <laughs> we, used to, we used to stand on the top of the chair and pull the cheese out. Every student was doing that. But uh, people say, oh, okay, that's the cheese curd. That has to be good. Yes, but you need to have a good gravy. Sure. If you have a different cheese and you have a good gravy, yeah, yeah. that's going to be a winner. It's the gravy. It's the, yeah, that's, that's the main. It. 
Yeah. So how did you determine that? I mean, obviously you got to put in. You got to have three really great ingredients. You got to have really good potatoes. You got to have an awesome gravy. You got to have some good cheese. How did you determine what you were going to use for those? How was the time? Well, okay. The, the French fries. I don't really like the frozen fries, so I said I, we need the hand cut fries. Like I said, it's a lot, a lot more work. Sure. Um, but uh, it's worth it. You know, um, now I, I start at the beginning. I didn't really know how to do the hand cut fries. You know, you try different things, but now I know how to do it. You know, <laughs> it takes time, <laughs> take time sure. but uh, it's a process. Uh, but um, you like, I like to have like the nice color on it. I like to be a little bit crispy, but not too crispy. People say, oh, I want crispy, crispy French fries. Not me. I like to have a little bit of softness in it, not not soggy, but sure. it has to be a little bit soft gotcha. because you you want your your gravy to absorb the, the potato to absorb the gravy. Um, cheese. That's why I have the double gooey cheese because I like the shred cheese mm -hmm. and I like the cheese curds. And um, in Quebec, it's one or the other. Gotcha. I said, I, I'm gonna put both together, and you know what? It's cool because you have that. <laughs> you have that bite of cheese curds, but you have the gooiness in the same time. That's awesome. So that people love it. They love the double gooey. <laughs> double gooey puts it. No, that's very fun. And the gravy. The gravy yeah. is very important. Okay. Sure. When I said there has to be a putin gravy, it's not a joke. If you don't have a putin gravy, you can use, um, that has to be rich. Um, you don't use just a straight beef gravy because uh, that's going to taste like roast beef. You don't want to right. taste like roast beef. Okay, I love roast beef, but not, not on potatoes. <laughs> you know? So it has to be something very rich and a little bit tangy. So what is good is a good putin gravy or uh, like a demi glaze or something. Sure. Uh, something you make from scratch, you know, when you uh, scrap the, the bottom of the pan, absolutely. you know? Yeah, absolutely. That will make a good gravy for poutine, yes. But um, it has to be pretty thick, too. Um, the potatoes has to hold the gravy. Sure. You don't want the gravy all the way down, and not, not to see anything on the, on the top. So uh, when people say, oh, it needs to have a good balance, um, not for me. Me, it has to be like a really good gravy. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. I'm, I'm pretty picky about the gravy. Yeah. That's awesome. All right. Yeah. Well, we can't, we can't get out of this conversation without you explaining where you got the name from. The hot mess? Yeah. Oh, okay. Hot mess? I mean, if you look... If you do some research, if you Google it, okay, sure. uh, it took me a long time to find a name. Uh, but uh, I was Googling the poutine in the English, okay? Of course, I can Google in French, but sure. you, you want a name who popped a little bit. So um, when I read it, they said, well, okay, poutine, really the slang for poutine in English, it's uh, really a them mess they will they will say it's really messy you know sure. um so ah, i said that something and it's hot it's supposed to be hot you, you don't want to have a cold poutine so i said huh oh, about hot mess you know so i decided to put on one word hot mess so that's, that's where awesome. it's coming from yes that's yeah fun. if you google it it's a uh, they will say oh poutine in english it's a slang for them a them mess so that's where that's the name cool. is coming from. Yeah. I like it. Now, <laughs> how long from having the idea of getting a food truck to selling the very first puts in? How long was that entire process? This sounds amazing. Two years. That's awesome. Well, it took two years. Uh, what happened is um, the time I was, we were building the truck, I took some classes. Sure. Uh, it's funny, but you know, Cooking, it's one thing, but um, you need to have some kind of a business mind. Sure. Um, you can be a good cook, but not really. A <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely, so right. I, I took some class. I took some business class. Um, I took some marketing class 
because I, I think the marketing, you need to be pretty strong sure. on marketing as well. You know, you got to post, you got to, it has to look good and um, you need to go get your information when you need to. So I took those classes in the same time and I took some bookkeeping class. Um, I, I guess I, I went to get everything I needed sure. to function, you know, um, and the cooking, uh, like I said, I went to culinary school. Um, so yeah, I just put awesome. everything together. And um, I think the worst was to find the truck and build it. And, uh, but um, my husband is a pipe fitter, his son is a pipe fitter. My other stepson is, is a plumber. Uh, everybody had a work to do and there you uh, go. one is a wilder. And, uh, <laughs> Seems to have worked out. It worked out. So That's yeah, awesome. it, took, uh, it took two years. It, it takes time. Wow. It takes time. It's something you have to uh, uh, to prepare for like a year or two. I would say two years. Gosh, a lot you more know? than just cutting fries. For sure. Oh, it's more. It's more than that. It's more than that. Like I said, cooking it's one thing, but if you don't have a business mind, gotcha. you're not gonna survive. You know, and it's um, it's too early for me to say that because we just started. So it doesn't mean next year, but it's 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 going up. You know, it's. Um, I like it. If somebody wants a hot mess puts in, where can they find you? Okay, so um, you can find me on, on Facebook. We have a Facebook page, the Hot Mess Puts In Food Truck, uh, had gooey cheese, um, and then uh, on Instagram as well. It's a had gooey cheese thing. So uh, we're very, very easy to find because if you Google Poutine, you're going to see Hot Mess Poutine appear right away. <laughs> I like it. It's no, that's awesome. I learned on the marketing side. <laughs> you have to make sure you're on top. <laughs> sure. Oh, that's a right? pretty good skill. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So congratulations on your success. That thank is very awesome to have a puts in food truck here in the area. That's really, really cool. And thank you for joining us on this episode. This is awesome. Merci beaucoup. <laughs> okay, you heard about that guy with the challenging Monique? Really? Oh my god, he's going down. Oh my god, did you hear about this old guy? He is challenging me. Are you serious? He's not gonna make it. I'm tweeting it right now. Did you guys hear about the guy who's challenging me? And what was up with his hair? Yeah. I don't know. Alright, Jesse Martino here, host of the French Canadian Legacy Podcast. Hanging out actually in my mom's kitchen where me, and my sister, Monique, are gonna practice to make sure we can defeat the brothers Bulio. So if you guys have been paying attention at all to Facebook, you know that there has been a challenge between me and my sis and the two brothers Bulio to determine who really does reign supreme over puts in in the state of New Hampshire. So without any further ado, my sister Monique. Yeah. Got the, are we gonna beat the Warriors? Say yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're hanging out here, my folks' house. The first step that we're doing is we're cutting up some potatoes. Now we're not. I'm assuming that the brothers Bouliou are going to be. Uh, using some pre-cut potatoes silly we're not doing that we're going to go old school we're going to chop off our own potatoes so we're getting that prepared first so that's going to be step one in this process as we start the day of prepping for our live contest against the bolios guaranteed those two brothers are not putting in the same amount of time in preparation that we are using main potatoes oh, sorry main potatoes all the way from maine that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Made the trip. That's right. Okay, so we just completed step one. We have our main potatoes hanging out in some water. We're going to let them soak for a while before we dry them off. Uh, so we're kind of taking a break because we have to let some time for the potatoes to soak. Now, obviously, this is just our practice. we got to go through a bunch of rehearsals to make sure that we're ready for when we take on the Brothers Bolio. 
Uh, my initial thoughts on the potatoes is uh, I'm glad we're doing main potatoes. I think that's going to be strong. I'm glad we're hand cutting our potatoes. Uh, we went back and forth on the skin on versus skin off discussion. Uh, my sis and I both personally like the fries with the skin on, so we're going to try it that way. We'll see how it works. If it doesn't work, next time we practice. We'll take we'll, feedback. We take feedback. Exactly. We'll take the feedback. We'll try it with the skin off. Um, but, yeah, I mean, the only real concern I have is at this point, um, I think it's probably a little inconsistent on the thickness of the fries between me and my sis and even amongst us. <laughs> we right. Cutting. So right. I think we got to practice our skills of chopping up the potatoes to make sure that we're able to keep them uh, relatively the same size. I think that's going to be important when it comes time to fry. But for the most part, step one, cutting potatoes, letting them soak, completed. All right, while we're uh, sitting and preparing for the waiting for the potatoes while they're soaking, my brother and I have been uh, discussing what our competitors are doing right now. Yeah, I just happened to get a, a message uh, from the brothers both of you. I know while we're, you know, we're taking a break now, but we're getting together obviously to get our puts in together. Uh, I know the brothers bully happen to be hanging out on a lake. That's, a lake? That's what they're doing with their time. They're obviously not as dedicated to puts in as the two of us. We're about to go back in uh, to work on our gravy. But in the meantime, we're hanging out, waiting for the potatoes to soak, and then we'll be in business. And the brothers, sad. All right, so we're back. What do you got going on now, Mary? Just working on the roux, so waiting for it to be that perfect, you know, golden brown. And we started the oil to get going on the French fries to get that process going. It's coming, it's coming together. I think we like, I like our breakdown. You got the gravy, I'm taking care of the potatoes. I think we're in business. That's right, yep, exactly. All right, so we're back. So we saw my sis has got the uh, the, the gravy going. So what I'm doing now is we got our potatoes, which I actually yeah, I'll cut a lot better than I first thought. I'm actually semi-impressed hey. with our skills as far as keeping things fairly even. So I'm going to lay out the potatoes on some paper towels, and I'm going to dry them as much as possible because uh, the more you get them dry, the better they're going to be crispy uh, when it comes time to sticking them in the oil to fry them up. So. Right now, I'm getting my sisters working on the roux, and I'm just uh, taking some potatoes, making sure they're nice and dry for when we start frying. All right, so we got the uh, the first batch, first couple of batches of fries. Um, not what we want. Uh, we're not getting the right crispness, but that's why we're doing a practice. Unlike the brothers Bouliou, we're just gonna show up and try it for the first time. Uh, we're gonna make sure we perfect it now. So we made a lot of potatoes. Uh, so we can do a bunch of different batches until we get the exactly the right crispness, crispiness, excuse me, that we're gonna be looking for. All right, so our last batch of fries was easily the best so far. We're definitely good. We're almost perfect, almost there. Just a little bit off. Uh, I think we we have what we want as far as, can you get with me on that? Yeah, the gravy is good. The just... gravy, we got what we want. Consistency and taste are good. Yeah, I will know. Obviously, both me and you, uh, me and my sis here, uh, we are very pro pepper. Yeah. So we definitely have a tendency to put a lot of pepper on stuff, and I hope that plays well. Because yeah. I think I think this is really really good. So plays well with the judges, right? Yeah. So we're gonna continue frying up some uh, some fries, and then uh, we'll do put them together, throw the cheese, have a test. Gonna give our very first test. First judge here. First judge. Never had it before. My main man, Ben. Woo! My next son. Is that what good? do you think about the fries? What do you think? Is it good crispy? We got good mm. puts in. Ben Ben seems to think we have a winner. So we our very first oh. mm. attempt that puts in, Ben is hammering it. So <laughs> we continue good? we'll continue to make fries. So we're gonna put in some other other attempts later on. But is in the good? meantime, Ben is all about this. Mm. Hi, this is Samuel from the Montreal Impact. I've received a message from uh, Jesse Martino uh, saying that uh, you guys, the Martinos and the Bolliers, you guys are hosting or having a poutine cooking contest, uh, which is amazing. I would love to participate in that. I'm a big poutine fan, obviously, because I'm from, I'm from Montreal. That's one of my favorite dishes. Uh, obviously, when you're not training, when when I'm not training and, and playing. Uh, but I just wanted to send a, a little message uh, to the Bolliers family uh, that unfortunately I've heard the Martinos are a lot better than you guys. Uh, so I'm sorry, but that's that's what I heard. I heard these are facts. Uh, so 
I wish you all the best and best of luck. But I think I think the Martinos will win. So, like I said, all the best to you both. But my side is the Martino. All the best. Take care. Did I hear this right? That the Martinos want a piece of the action? The Martinos want to take on the Bolliers? Beaulieu is actually French, and it's actually just from outside of Quebec City, where they invented the poutine. They're the masters of the poutine, and you want to take them on? Yeah, Martineau sounds a little French, but it's not the same thing as a Beaulieu. I mean, it, it's poutine capital of the world, and you want to challenge these guys? Gretz, what do you think? Gretz, do they have a chance? No fire, PJ. Good luck anyways, Martinos. Boyers. To victory. Uh-huh. We are the Boyers shuffling crew. Shuffling on down. Do it for you. We're so bad, we know we good. We drink some protein just for you. Martinos. I have a question to answer your question. As you, Martinos, travel to Poutine Mania, as you realize, Martinos, that you enter Merrimack, New Hampshire. Smell it, warriors. Smell it, warriors. Do you, Martinos, look for a place to hide? Or do you, Martinos, face this challenge? That you move the powerful Martinos, you must self-destruct. So you will know who the chosen one is or the chosen two because me and Tim are not the chosen ones we are the only ones yeah we canceled today and that's all right Marno's you can bring whatever judge that you want, whatever recipe you want, it doesn't matter, whatever. Because we are going to have this at some point. This ain't your parents, your grandparents, poutine contest. This is here, this is now. This is the big leagues, and you are throwing Cracker Jacks in the stands. So set whatever date that you want, it doesn't matter. We'll see you then. Venez tous jeunes fils et garçons, je vais vous raconter L'histoire de notre immigration ici au USA De grands aventuriers, de pays étrangers 